Welcome to Curtin, Malaysia. An Australian university situated in the vibrant city of Miri. Home to Malaysia's century-old petroleum industry. And gateway to Borneo's spectacular national parks. This is where expert teaching staff guide students to discovery in the fields of engineering, science, commerce, and the arts. At Curtin, Malaysia, you receive a global education. And the distance between the Malaysian and Perth campuses is no distance at all. You will learn in world-class facilities. Or your classroom might be the stunning natural beauty of Borneo. Here, students from over 45 countries share their culture, knowledge and experiences. And innovation comes from multiple points of view. Beyond academic achievement, Curtin Malaysia prides itself on a culture that promotes community engagement and develops the leaders of tomorrow. This is where you have the space to study, achieve and discover. And where colleagues become lifelong friends. Curtin Malaysia is about following your passion, achieving your potential and gaining a degree that prepares you for the dynamic global marketplace. change we're ready for you join us change is here Uh, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen from different parts of the world joining us for this special live webinar from Curtin University, Malaysia. Uh, today we'll be looking at our work to the web, uh, live webinar on introduction to international business. Uh, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Samuel, the head of uh, Department of Management, Marketing and Digital Business. And I would like to also introduce our special guest speaker today, Professor Andrew Singh who is currently the Dean Faculty of Business at the University of Malaysia. We have four panelists today who will be sharing their different experiences with you. Our first is Associate Professor Dr. Liu, who is also a lecturer, Associate Professor at Cote University. I uh, will be sharing with us present and future prospect of Master of International Business degree compared with other business master degree at the university. Uh, this will be followed by one of our students, uh, I see Clean will be sharing with us my choice of MIB, that is Master of International Business, over Master Degree in Business at the Faculty of Business. I uh, closely follow another student. Uh, her name is uh, Aina Omadia. She will also be sharing with us for sure proof your business career. And finally, we have the opportunity and privilege to invite our former student council president, uh, His Excellency. I call His Excellency today because he has passed out 
from Kota University, His Excellency, His Royal Majesty, uh, all the way from uh, Dakar in Bangladesh. Uh, his name is um, Sheikh Tazin Islam. So most of us will know him. He will be sharing with us his uh, student experience while at Kota University, Malaysia. Uh, without further ado, I will inv invite our special guest today, Professor Andris Sim, to share his experience with us, his brief message. Over to you, Professor Andrew. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Samuel, for uh, introducing the, the webinar, introducing our, our panelists. I also want to welcome uh, everybody to listening, participating today. I hope that uh, many uh, of our former students, graduates, uh, and uh, even beyond that, um, are listening uh, to this session. The session is what is this all about? Uh, uh, of course, you can you can read, inform you, yourself about uh, what uh, what the constituents are about this uh, postgraduate course. Uh, however, uh, we thought it is also nice and uh, probably uh, equally important to listen to those who are really life. In, lively involved uh, in in teaching in learning uh, in 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 this course uh, because we with Kurt Malaysia we just recently opened this Master of International Business Business uh, uh, Master by coursework. Um, <clears throat> I thought, what can I tell you uh, about say this master? Maybe. I don't. I hope I address one of your concerns uh, because <clears throat> what you have heard, to, particularly during the past couple of years, and this is not uh, uh, driven by the pandemic. It's not uh, COVID-induced. Is that <clears throat> quite a, a number of uh, very very reputable MBA courses in the U.S. and in other countries? closed down. Some said temporarily, some uh, announced that for forever. <clears throat> and uh, you may wonder, <clears throat> because if you are looking out for, for uh, additional, for advanced uh, uh, degree programs, there is always, the, say, the choice in our field of business choice, uh, uh, in our business field, Shall we, I go into an MBA or shall I go into a more specialized uh, master's uh, uh, course? And this is what I wanted to address briefly. Um, of course, uh, both, uh, say, directions have their merits. Whereas the MBA programs uh, have been uh, usually designed and set up particularly for those who come in and join with, uh, say, substantial uh, a professional uh, experience. Uh, the other master programs are usually more appropriate as a, say, a consecutive, as a follow-up, or uh, for those who did not acquire uh, extensive uh, professional experience yet. Anyway, um, how to assess? So why did they shut down? So. Quite a, quite a number of, of, of those MBAs are gone. Uh, simply, the, the traditional um, design was two years. And it is, uh, in the meantime, uh, simply not competitive for in, 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 in many settings, in many uh, business schools, uh, because it's too long uh, and it's too expensive. So there are cheaper alternatives and students or people who work in the workplace want uh, to get it faster. So what is our MIB? MI, our MIB is uh, definitely faster. It's uh, currently uh, designed for one and a half year. And if you uh, participate, enroll with substantial prior uh, professional experience, you can reduce it uh, further even to one year. When it comes to, to uh, the content, I can assure you that um, we are not so much apart. Yeah? Uh, Fifty percent and more of the the core uh, units and uh, say content is the same 
uh, so uh, in an MBA, in our Curtin MBA, which is taught in, in, in Perth, in Australia, and, and uh, for example, the MIB. So you don't miss that much. Rather, and this is another uh, uh, driving uh, moment for, uh, for other uh, uh, management or uh, master courses and uh, uh, to the disadvantage of the MBAs, uh, students and uh, graduates, they want to have more specialized uh, options. So, and this is exactly what our M MIB uh, offers. You have a very good foundation, a basement in, uh, say in, with international uh, implications and relations in the core units, and then you can specialize. Uh, so this is what I wanted to 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 start with at the very beginning of, of of this webinar to give a little bit of an orientation. So do we do do you miss it? Do you miss any chances uh, of a, of a, of an MBA? Because you, as you can see, it's not 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 a secret. We don't offer an MBA because we feel. Uh, it is not very, uh, not too attractive and competitive compared to other options. So uh, this is a few remarks at the very beginning. Uh, and I hand over or hand back to our moderator, to Dr. Samuel. I wish you uh, that you take out uh, much, as much as you can from uh, our panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Andres, for the brief uh, introduction and your comment. It's important to let the others know the distinction between MIB and MBA. That is a very good uh, 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 presentation. Uh, before we continue, before I invite uh, the first uh, panel member, I would like to remind our audience that uh, you leave your questions at the comment section. If you have any question, kindly type your questions at the comment sections. At the end of the presentation, the panelists will have opportunity to answer your questions. Uh, please do that. Uh, without further ado, I will call on the first uh, presenter or first panelist member, uh, Associate Professor uh, Leo. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, he will be talking on present and future prospect of Master of International Business degree. Uh, over to you, Associate Professor Dr. Leo. Thank you for, for joining us today. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here. Okay, uh, I will share with you some of my insights as a lecturer teaching this program. But uh, first of all, uh, as all of us know that the business world today needs a lot of global managers. And in fact, across the BRICS economy, which is the Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, we call it BRICS, BRICS economies, and also the emerging economies. Uh, research has shown that the uh, we are lacking in terms of the global managers. So therefore, if you embark on this specialized uh, MIB degree, the window of the world is open to you. That's my first remark. Yeah. So uh, you will definitely learn how to broaden your business horizon in specialized units. So we have we have uh, core units such as the management units, uh, business strategy units, marketing units. Even there's a business research methods, global business dynamics, and also not forgetting, uh, you'll be able to choose three strips. Okay, so there are actually 10 core units, plus uh, you can choose one of the streams. One of the stream is, uh, we call it the project management. In project management, you will learn things like cost management, project cost management, risk management, time management, and also many other global projects management skills. Secondly, you can also choose the, uh, we call it the uh, very important stream to me, is predictive data analytics. As all of us know, uh, data is actually the new resource of the business world, not money, not material, but data. Yeah. So in this stream, you will learn key skills like data management, programming, decision methods, predictive analytics, and data security. As all of us know, issues on data, a good manager should be, a good global manager should be able to manage data well and make use of the data for decision making. The other one, a very attractive stream is what we call as the human rights stream. In this stream, you will learn about human rights, the theories, the philosophy, the cultures, as well as the instruments. 
Okay, you can see that from the snapshot of the content of the of the program, yeah. Uh, your career prospects actually range across industries, government, consulting firms, multinational corporations. Yeah, as we know, once the the global economy will be reopened very very soon, yeah, we will we will back to normal in twenty twenty two, right? So every, you you should be equip yourself in one and a half years with the global skills that you need. All right, so your your career prospects. Uh, will be wide open you can be a business development manager you can be a ceo you know you can be a countrywide director for a multinational company you can be a business analyst and all that and more specifically if you are if you are taking the human rights stream you can actually work with united nations the ngos and if you pursue project management you have the opportunity to head projects with international companies and if of course if you are taking the i think the hottest stream that is very popular will be the predictive data analytics to me yeah so here you'll be able to uh, to to be able to manage on big data and strategic decision making in remote and hybrid working environment all right so uh in this course uh, you will also develop critical skills like ethical and be culturally competent to deal with the global community yeah and this is also well in line with the curtain graduate capabilities. So uh, in summary, uh, this is this is the this is a good choice for your investment for your future. Uh, I will look forward to uh, some question and answers from the audience after this. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Associate Professor Liu, for that insightful discussion. Uh, please uh, let me remind us again. Kindly drop your questions or your at the comment section at the end of the presentation. You have opportunity of uh, having answer to your question as mentioned by the last speaker. Uh, right now, we call on Isaac Nim, one of our MIB students, who will be sharing with us why his choice of MIB over other master degree program in business. Uh, Isaac, over to you. You are welcome to this session. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, yeah, my name is Ajay Lin, currently a student from MIB. So now I'll be talking about why I have chosen MIB over the other master program out there. So firstly, this course actually enables me to gain the knowledge and expertise which are useful for me to advance in the field of international business and management. While taking this course, I will have the opportunity to undertake a cross-disciplinary stream of four units per semester as the units in this course requires multi-faculty initiative, I am able to be exposed to a wider choice of specializations. Now, the cross-disciplinary nature of this stream means that I will have the opportunity to interact with students from other faculties and wider my social network, which would benefit me in the future. Now, why I chose MIB program is because by the time of uh, of completing this program, I'll be able to develop the skills required for me to lead and facilitate internationalization activities of organizations. I will also be able to get an edge in terms of cross-cultural interactions, both internal and external to an organization. Besides that, my learning is applied and focuses on current issues in the global, regional, and national business environment. And lastly, the most important point, the teaching staff over here are highly experienced and they are internationally educated and trained and do not shy away from any real life issues. So the main things that I will learn, that I, and I will get to learn from this master's is that I'll be able to learn on how to engage critically and reflectively with contemporary knowledge and skills relating to international business and apply to professional practices. Next, I'll also be able to respond creatively and effectively to generate uh, innovative solutions to complex issues in international business, all right? More, moreover, uh, I'll also be able to make evidence-based judgments and sound business decisions through sophisticated evaluations and synthesis of information from a range of credible sources, all right? Besides that, consider profitability 
sustainability and impact of business environment and society when using new and established technologies in international business communication and negotiations are also part of what I will learn from uh, this master's program, okay? I'll also be able to actively seek and engage in opportunities for ongoing learning that builds the body of professional knowledge in the field of international business and contributes to their personal development. I will also be able to evaluate the impacts of international business in a global system and apply international standards and practices within a global context, okay? Um, I will also be able to learn and engage in ethical and culturally competent management practices to work effectively in culturally diverse team environments with global organizations. Lastly, I'll also be able to work professionally and ethically, both independently and collaboratively, complying with appropriate legislations and protocols and demonstrate leadership skills as appropriate. Now, these are my personal reasons why I have chosen to study MIB, Master, uh, Masters of International Business, over other master's programs out there. The pros from this really are more beneficial to me compared to other master's programs. And I wish that um, my sharing will be able to reach out to some of our, some people out there who wish to also benefit from these experiences and learning outcomes. Um, that will be all from me. I would like to pass it back to the host, Dr. Samuel. Thank you, Isaac, for that insightful uh, discussion. I love the aspect where you mentioned about the, uh, the lecturers, the tutors that are well-trained and are internationally uh, certified in their field of specialization. I want to say thank you for, uh, for that uh, comment. We really appreciate it. Uh, just to remind our audience, the, if you have any questions, please kindly drop your question at the comment section. We are eager to attend to your question at the end of the presentation. Now, I will now call our third uh, panelist, uh, Ms. Aina Omadia. She will be talking or sharing with us uh, why you need to push or prove your business career. Uh, over to you, Aina. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, um, thank you for inviting me. So my name is Aina Omardia. I am currently taking my master's in international business under the project management stream. And as what was stated in the posters and introduced by Dr. Samuel, I will be talking about how to future-proof your business career. So as a university graduate myself, to achieve my career goals with the degree I have uh, sorry for that I think uh, she has a connection problem she will join us soon are you ready Okay, uh, because of time, I will invite her again. Uh, let me call our former student uh, council president, uh, Sheikh Tassin Isam. He will be talking to us, my student experience at Koti University. I'll come back to Aina later. So Aina, please get prepared later. Uh, Sheikh, are you ready over to you to share your experience with us as a former student at Koti University, your experience? Okay, thank you. Hello, hello everyone. Hello all viewers. Thank you, Dr. Samuel, for inviting me. Thank you to the Faculty of Business for inviting me as a panelist today in this webinar. Um, don't need to do much of an introduction. I think uh, Dr. Samuel did an excellent job at that. But just briefly, uh, I'm Sheikh Tassin. I was a graduate in 2020. I did my course in Bachelor of Commerce. And right now I am in Curtin alumni. And today I'll be talking about the student experience at Curtin University. So personally for me, I always feel that the student experience is very, very important. Uh, it allows a student to enhance their, their knowledge and also grow beyond the classroom. And for me, I've had a personal, uh, like an amazing experience at Curtin University. 
university. But I'm not sure. Uh, I think a lot of people ask, will they have the same experience or not? Now, for me, I feel like that is possible because Curtin provides an excellent platform for it. Whether you are in your undergrad studies or in a postgraduate studies like the master's in international business. So to give you a bit of an idea, I'll be sharing some of the highlights of my student experience at Curtin. Uh, first off, I think uh, my the other previous panelists, Isaac did an excellent job in explaining how talented and uh, qualified the lecturers are at Curtin. But what uh, often doesn't get mentioned is how they're always ready to help the students. So when you're here at Curtin, know that there, there are tons of consultancy slots with your lecturers every week. And even beyond that, if you just drop by their office and if they're free, they'll happily accommodate you. So this is the kind of help that really enables you to maximize your learning potential at Curtin. And that, that has made the learning experience for me as well, very comfortable. They're always there to help you. Besides this, the university has an active student council, which I was a part of as the president in 2019. Uh, the other two panelists as well, uh, Isaac and Ina, were also members of the student council that year. Uh, so if you're not sure of what the student council does, it is an organization of students elected by the students to work closely with the higher management, um, other departments and faculties to make sure that the demands of the students are met. Um, many universities do not have such representative bodies, which could be an issue because, you know, even if the management has good intentions at heart, they often find it difficult to relate to the students. This is where the council comes in useful. We, as the student council, host major student events, uh, development projects for the students as well as the campus. Uh, the student council also oversees over 60 plus clubs in Curtin, which range from all sorts of categories like sports, academics, special interests, religious and cultural. And all of these clubs, they offer a myriad of activities for students to engage in. Um, throughout the year, even during the pandemic, the student council and these clubs have hosted a lot of fun events, online, of course, uh, for students to engage in so that they don't get bored. So as a student at Curtin Malaysia, there's always something to do. You can explore a new interest of yours or just try out uh, whatever it is you're already interested in. Curtin Malaysia also has an amazing 1,200 acres, uh, large, beautiful and modern campus, which is filled with facilities. The, the campus is grounds for all sorts of sports, uh, from football to futsal, tennis, uh, badminton, basketball, you name it. And uh, the campus has a library, a massive library actually, tons of study spaces and the facilities, they, they keep on upgrading. Even recently, uh, the university has opened a new cafeteria. Um, I think two years back before when I was there, the university also opened a Bloomberg trading room, which does real life simulation of trading. So it's, it's good to see that there is constant upgrades. Uh, the university also has amazing shuttle service that goes around all the off-campus accommodation areas. So if you're living anywhere there, you should have no problem getting to campus. Um, they also run a shuttle to town during the weekend, so you can go there, watch a movie with your friends and do some shopping. Um, overall, I think the experience is amazing, but I think if I had to mention the most, or personally for me, the favorite aspect of Curtin student life is the Curtin community. So you can go to another university with 20 to 30,000 students, but when it comes to Curtin with its relatively small population, it has a very tight knit community. Uh, and now if you're an active student in this community, you will get to know pretty much everyone. So in this lovely environment, it is very, very easy for you to network with people, make tons of friends, which is especially important if you're doing a postgraduate degree. Because after that, you'll be going to the real world where networks will come in incredibly handy. So don't mistake the, the small population for lack of diversity, though. There are students from all over the world, all parts of Malaysia as well. So there's plenty of diversity at Curtin. Uh, to be honest, I think five minutes is too short to share about the amazing student experience I have had at Curtin. So I've only shared the highlights. In these four years, I've done it all from volunteering to participating in events, organizing them, um, exchange programs abroad, internships, uh, and I've even participated in competitions and won. I think I've done a lot. I still feel like there was a lot more that I could have done 
as for those viewers, if you're interested in joining Curtin, you can do all of this as well. So hopefully my insight of the student experience and Curtin is valuable to those of you that are watching and hopefully you will consider Curtin as your destination of choice. Thank you. Passing it back to the host, Dr. Samuel. Thank you, President Sheikh, for your comment and your, for sharing your experience with us. Uh, you say you have not completed your job at Cotton. Very simple. You are welcome to start your MIB in February uh, next year. I will be welcome to see you again. And uh, maybe after that, you proceed with your PhD. I will become lecturer. So we have many things to do. Uh, without further ado, I will call on uh, Thank you. Aina Wadia. Uh, are you ready to make your presentation about uh, future proof your uh, business career? Okay, welcome back. You have the floor. Yeah, I'm ready right now. Yes. Okay, so um, hello everyone. My name is Aina Mardia. I am currently taking my master's in international business under the project management uh, stream. As what was stated in the posters and introduced by Dr. Samuel, I would be talking about how to future-proof your business career. So. As a university graduate myself, or well, before I enrolled into the program, of course, I always wonder if I am on the right track. I often ask myself, am I able to achieve my career goals with the degree I have? Am I fully equipped with the skills that my future career requires? Am I even able to have a career after graduating? So I'm sure that other graduates also ask themselves um, the same question because there is always a sense of doubt and insecurity that they might just end up being unemployed for the rest of their life. However, I am here to say not to worry. Regardless if you have graduated or will be graduating, it is not the end of the world yet. There are actually answers to the questions that I mentioned earlier and other career-related questions you might be asking yourself. And today, I will be sharing the answers with you. Firstly, before we get into any so-called career hacks, what needs to be understood is the concept of future-proofing your career. So we humans, we're constantly evolving. And as a business graduate, regardless of your major, you should understand that consumers' mindset, business operations, and jobs are different now compared to how they were 10 years ago. Some jobs may no longer exist, and new jobs are being created as we speak to accommodate to the vast technological advancements we are experiencing. Therefore, it is crucial for individuals like you and me to be able to adapt to these changes before we get left behind. Hence, requiring us to future-proof our future, especially in terms of our career. So, one of the ways you can do so is by choosing a growing sector I'm sure everyone here wants to have a career that is still relevant in the future. So before you get into applying a job, ask yourself these questions. Is the sector you're planning to get into keen on modernization? And what are the challenges the sector is facing at this point of time? And are they doing anything about it, especially in adapting to the changes? Ensure that your answers um, to these questions are positive before you proceed. And just for your information, a Canadian job website called workopolis.com conducted a survey last year, found that sectors with high demand currently are high tech, healthcare, and data analytics. These are some of the sectors you could consider. And although they are not necessarily related to business, there are still elements of business in them, such as marketing, management, finance, and much more. In addition, the same survey also found in most CVs, IT skills are the best selling point to recruiters, such as customer relationship, relationship management and user experience design. So besides making sure that the job suits you, make sure you also suit the job by ensuring that you are equipped with the necessary skills needed for the job. One other way you can future proof our, uh, your career is by embracing change. I think we can all agree that the idea of getting a job, punching time cards, and getting a promotion after several years 
is unappealing compared to job hopping. But at the same time, the idea of job hopping is also a bit scary as it could leave an impression that you're not great at keeping your job. But try to look at it at a different way by embracing change. Not only can you face more challenges from job hopping, you could also get more fulfilling roles, enhance your skills, and diversify your portfolio. Just to let you know, a study done by Harvard Business in 2014 found that most leaders in the past decades were people that stayed in a company for a very long time. But this has changed ever since. Not only that, the study also found that one big differentiator among leaders as their education are their education level, which brings me to my last point, level up. Future-proofing your business career could be done by leveling up from just having a bachelor's degree to having a master's degree as well. So getting a master's degree makes a huge impact to your career prospects. Have you ever dreamt of working in a company that seemed impossible for you to apply? It would now be possible to do so as you stand out among potential employees with your master's degree. Sure, it could be a hefty investment and almost seem unnecessary. That was one of my concerns because some of my friends are already earning their own money and I am still here studying. But knowing that I'm able to gain additional knowledge and I am better to secure a job after I graduate, I am less concerned that I am making the wrong choice and I believe all of you might be too if you were in my shoes. So let me sum it up for you. Firstly, choose a growing sector to ensure that you will have a more stable career. Secondly, embrace change and ignore what others have to say as you are doing this for you um, and not for them. Thirdly, level up because knowledge is power and with knowledge, you can go far. Although this may sound like generic answers, um, you need to consider that different people have different uh, career goals, different circumstances, different privileges. So what suits you might not suit others. So therefore, do what suits you in order to future-proof your own career. That is all from me today. Thank you. Thank you, Aina, for that uh, insightful presentation. In fact, uh, she mentioned three things that I would like to mention again. Uh, she said, choose a growing sector, choose a growing economic sector, and then you should embrace change. You should embrace change and not only that, she mentioned that knowledge is power. Information is power. Knowledge is power. And the only thing that is permanent itself is change. And one thing I noticed about our presenters, the demonstrated confidence, is one of the quality you are going to acquire when you come to court as a student, demonstrate quality and confidence. You can see them with ease, without any stress. They are all confident about what they are doing. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of you. Uh, I still want to encourage our viewer to drop your question at the comment section. Uh, right now, we go into our question and answer section. I want to uh, check out if you have uh, any question from our audience. Any question from our audience? Let me, I have uh, seven comments here. Uh, any question? Okay, I have a question here. Uh, somebody... Uh, Carol was asking, um, will you advise this course for someone with a very little background in business? Uh, let me call on uh, Dr. Liu to answer this question. Will you advise this course for someone with very little background in business? Okay, uh, thank you, Carol, for that question. I think this is very common. Uh, my, my advice would be, uh, because as I told you, uh, the course structure of MIP, you're going to do 10 core units, all right? So if you look at the core units, uh, you're going to learn the basics of management through management and organizational behavior. You're going to learn also a unit called, um, let me just check, yeah? business research methods. You're going to learn units about introduction to international marketing. Of course, the units in this masters being a specialized in international business it has a focus on international business all right so if if you have little background in business um of course you will have the advantage if you have a background but that does not mean that if you do not have a background in this in, in business you can't take this uh, masters in international business um 
You see, other units are like managing multinational enterprises and, and so on. Uh, my advice would be uh, this, this masters of business will be able, you'll be able to specialize in international business uh, and, and gain some background knowledge in business. I think this masters is open for all, regardless of whether you have background or not in business. But having said that, if you have a, a little background in business, you will have the advantage, of course. I think that's my answer. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Isaac, what do you have to say to that? Uh, I would like to say that, yeah, even though you might have a little background in business, but I feel that like, I agree with what Dr. Liu has said, that it's open to all, even though you might not have much background, but the lectures and all the teaching stuff there will surely uh, guide you through it step by step along the way, okay? Even though you might not, you might have more questions than normal students, but they will surely be there to happily and gladly answer and guide you, even though you might need a little bit more guidance, but they'll still be there to help you out. And I would say uh, the units that I've taken so far, from what I, uh, it's like, even though you might not have um, much experience with business, but the units will also teach you on the basics that would mm -hmm. that you would require to further on with this master. So even though you might not have much background, but don't worry, we will, they, will, they will be taught some basics for you to further understand the rest, and the lectures will always always be there to help you out no matter what is it i i have tried and yes they really help you out no matter what okay uh thank you let me add to that uh, answer presented by our by our panelists um first and foremost currently we have one of our students at mib um i i hope he's a, he's a member of the audience today uh he also has a computer engineering background he's also our one of our MIB students currently uh, was doing MIB program. And I want to also share from my own personal experience. I think 11 years ago, 2010, I was also an MIB student at Munash University in Malaysia. We are 27 in the class and only five of us had a business degree background. The rest are from different background, different from business and they came out successfully. So with your different background, whether from engineering, whether from pharmacy or medicine, you are more you are much more qualified to I mean it's an opportunity for you to have another degree in different discipline apart from your home. Like the MIB should have said, we have qualified lecturers who are ready to uh, provide assistance and to guide you very well. So uh, if you want to uh, pursue this program, you are welcome irrespective of your background. Now we move on to second question. We move on to second question, and then um, it's from. Fifi Liu, uh, he or she was asking, and uh, this question, I've already um, omitted one question, but I will come back to that question from Kong. I will come back to Kong question. Uh, this person wants to ask this question directly from Aina and Isaac. The question is, how do you think this MIB qualification help you stand out from degree graduates? How do you think MIB qualification help you stand out from degree graduate. Uh, let me start from uh, Aina because she presented on Fusion Proof your business career. Aina, over to you. Hello. Um, how do I think this MIB qualification helps me stand out from degree graduates? I think the first point will be that I have. I have a different degree than others. I think that will be the most literal answer, whereby someone else has just a bachelor's and I have a master's. I think that's the most um, obvious one. Another one would be MIB is not really focused on only one major or like two majors, like the previous degree, the previous bachelor's degree, because I'm, let's say I am a banking and finance student, but taking MIB, Masters of International Business, it does not indicate that I'm taking finance or um, banking. It just means that I'm taking international business. Therefore, it would um, open up more chances for me as not only will I be learning um, MIB-related um, units such as management or marketing, I also have a background of finance and banking. I would say that's from my side. Maybe you can ask Isaac on how he sees this question. 
Okay, thank you, Aina. Uh, Isaac, over to you, please. Yes, uh, I would say um, with this MIB qualifications, not, uh, not only would we be stand out from the others just because we have an extra cert, but I would say the uh, experience, uh, practical or literal experience we gain from this program will also help us stand out in the crowd. Like we'll be learning about uh, issues relating specifically towards international business that might not be taught in normal degree programs will be taught in this MIB program, which will give you a further and enhanced knowledge towards international business or any other, uh, how say, business related matters. Um, I would say so far I've noticed that in regards to workplace, right? Um, individuals to which which hold, holds a master's degree for example let's just take dr samuel for example he holds a mib degree himself and currently he is also uh, the head of um he is uh, like he is also currently the head of department for this uh, market, marketing uh, marketing major and all that so i can see that uh, individuals who holds a master degree actually get promoted easier and faster than those who does not have uh, uh how say a master's degree i would say that even in the workplace whether it be mib or what but majority i've seen mib students um they get promoted easier to like manager levels compared to normal degree graduates i would say this is because not only do they have an extra cert to show but they also have practical and literature knowledge and further enhanced knowledge because of this um extra mib masters Thank you. Dr. Liu, from uh, HRM background, what do you think? Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, from the HR perspective, of course, uh, having a master's degree is, a, is a definitely an additional asset for the organization, definitely in terms of uh, job resource. All right, and then uh, having a master's degree will give an advantage to the organization and to the employees in terms of like, uh, advanced knowledge in a certain field, especially for MIB, because you're gonna you're gonna be a specialist in international business compared to MBA and, and other business degrees. So I guess uh, of course nowadays gaining employment is not an easy thing. You need to have kind something to stand out among among the community, and the word international stands out. I, I must say, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think as you heard to that, I like sharing a personal experience that will help you. Uh, 2004, I applied for a job as a marketing manager in my country in a, a, a downstream of the oil industry. So the company is looking for a marketing manager. And the 20 of us were invited for interview. And during the interview, I was the only candidate with uh, MBA marketing. I'm talking about 2005, and I was the first person to arrive at the interview. We have to write our name. The interview was uh, 9 o'clock. I go there since 30 in the morning <laughs> because I travel from other city. So I was the first person to be interviewed, and I got the job as a marketing manager. I thought after the interview, the MD and others told me that, look, all those 19 people, we just talked to them for two minutes. We have already employed you. Why? Because I have uh, a higher qualification. So when you have MIB, it's an additional advantage for you in your working place. Oh, thank you. I hope we've answered your question, Liu. Uh, we go to the third question. Uh, the third question is from, uh, what's his name? Uh, John at uh, John. How many units are there per semester for the MIB course? Uh, Isaac, over to you. How many units? idea per semester for the MIB course? Okay, so currently we have four units per semester and we are going to study for three semesters. So means in total, you only be taking 12 units. Uh, what also another, um, like I was saying, uh, plus point for MIB is that actually this is more towards a coursework structure whereby you just need to go to lecture, tutorials, and then submit assignments. There is not much of like a research going on. That's why it's more towards like units. So four units, one semester, 12 units in total. Okay, thank you. Isaac, you still hold on, you answer the next question from Kong. Uh, the question is, may I ask if the lectures and tutorials will be conducted physically, that is face-to-face -face classroom, or virtually online, or are there other arrangements? Okay, 
Uh, from what we know currently, uh, for this program, MMB, we will have hybrid version whereby it is both online. You can either choose to take it online or either you can come to campus and take it uh, face to face. So it means both options are available. If you're in Miri, you can come to our, visit our campus. But if you're not in Miri and you do not wish to fly in, you can actually take these courses online. We call it uh, on the online lectures and tutorials and all that. As the assignments, you can also do it and submit it online. No hard copy is needed. So it will be more easy for those that aren't able to come into Miri. Thank you. Uh, the next question is directed to His Excellency uh, Tashin Sheikh. Uh, the question is, uh, how was your experience as a student council president before? How will you think you are able to get the same experience here as compared to other universities? Right. Uh, so for me, the experience as a student council president was an amazing one. Obviously, I have learned a lot. I have improved my managerial and also my uh, interpersonal skills in leaps and bounds. I think what really sets it apart from other universities is, number one, as a student council president in Curtin, you get to work closely with the higher management, as I've mentioned before. Um, like people in within the university, such as um, the lovely uh, chief operating officer of Curtin University. If you join us, you will get to know him, hopefully, um, Mr. Peter, along with also the Pro Vice Chancellor, the Deputy Pro Vice Chancellor, who was the advisor during our term as the student council. You get to work closely with them who are highly experienced in their areas, in their fields. And by working with them, you'll get to share that knowledge as well. They will pass it to you with which you can go really really far. As I've also mentioned that I've done an internship, what I realized when I was applying for the internship was that obviously when you're applying for an internship, you don't have most of the times a job experience prior to that. However, this experience as a student council president helped me to stand out and secure an excellent internship position. And even now, uh, after graduating, that I've been uh, working for uh, different companies as a marketing consultant, that experience as a student council president stands out for me. Um, furthermore, I think what you know sets us apart from other universities is that the student council uh, experience, whether as a president or whatever position you're in in the council, it is officially recognized by the university. So from Curtin University, you are provided a uh, certificate. Uh, it's called the Curtin Extra Cert. Through that, it certifies that you've had an industry level experience in this role. So yeah, I think that is how uh, the experience is an amazing one that can help you grow. And it's not just for student council, it could be tons of other opportunities at campus, whether it be for volunteering or leadership programs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more important question before we close. Uh, this individual is asking uh, Ross, I think uh, whether, okay, does doing MIB open up opportunity to pursue PhD at Curtin Malaysia? Does doing MIB open up opportunity to pursue PhD at Curtin Malaysia? I will direct that question to Associate Professor Leo, uh, being a supervisor of PhD student and uh, our former learning and teaching uh, associate. So can you help us with that question? Okay, uh, thank you uh, for that question, Fifi. <clears throat> As I mentioned just now, the cost structure has actually a business research methods as well as another unit called advanced um, business research methods, international business strategy research. <clears throat> so if you ask me, of course, if you want to pursue a PhD at any universities, not only Curtin, you preferably uh, the guidelines is you need to have a master of philosophy where the master of philosophy is actually a research track where you'll be taught the uh, basic research methodology and the uh, and the basic uh, skills to do research whereas uh, mib is more of a coursework a master's taught by coursework which will actually get uh, equipped graduates to be industry ready so actually, my, my answer to this is uh, the emphasis of MIB is uh, not, not so much towards research, but more to get graduates to be industry ready to join the international business arena. Um, so if you ask me about whether MIB graduates are ready or, or can pursue PhD, 
my answer is, uh, of course, based on what your emphasis is. Uh, I'm sure if you are taking an MIB degree, master's degree, I think your main objective would be to pursue a successful career as a, as a global manager, not so much in terms of pursuing PhD. But that does not stop you from pursuing your PhD if after your MIB, you would like to uh, 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 sharpen up your research skills through pursuing the uh, Masters of Enfield. That's, that's my, uh, my response. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I will add to that uh, response from Dr. Leo. Uh, I want to say, I want to add that uh, if you complete your MIB at Culture University of Malaysia, you complete the whole program, you can pursue your PhD. And this is the reason. We have two research uh, program, I mean, modules. One is uh, business research and one is international business research. So this prepare you to be able to conduct uh, research, uh, publish paper at conference, and also uh, publish paper in the journals, uh, articles, or whatever you like. Like uh, he mentioned, if your goal is to pursue your PhD, uh, you must take your study series right from the beginning uh, when you start your business uh, method research that, okay, I'm going to pursue my PhD at the conclusion of my MIB. So therefore, during your uh, MIB program, you begin to identify your likely or potential supervisor when you finish your MIB program. Uh, lecturers who are interested to supervise you, you can share your research interest with them. And uh, they can encourage you to uh, do a literature review, preparably you present at the conference, preparably you publish this paper, and then uh, to see how it goes. Uh, the reason I'm saying this, we have other university in Malaysia that offer MIB, and uh, they don't um, make provision or they don't offer models in business research and international business research. And that make MIB program at Scott University in Malaysia different from other university in Malaysia that offer MIB program. Like Dr. Liu has mentioned, they only prepare you for the industry. But in our own case, we have two research models. So this will help you to be able to have knowledge of what research is all about. Like I mentioned, I started my MIB at Monash University after completing four modules because we do not offer research or uh, component as part of the model. So I opted out. I went to another university. I started my PhD. But at Scott University, we have two models, business research method and international business research method. So if at the beginning of your study that uh, your goal is to have your PhD, feel free to discuss with uh, any of us at the faculty. We are ready to guide you towards achieving your overall goal. I think that answered the question. Uh, without further ado, we don't have any other question, but if you have question, uh, you can contact us, you can email us. We are ready to provide you answers to your questions. And uh, just before I go, the new semester will commence in February 2022. So you can apply for the application fee online. And uh, if you are from Curtin University, Malaysia, you are a graduate of this university, you have 20% uh, alumni discount on the total tuition fee. So I'm inviting the former president and to inform all his uh, army and the retired officers to join us to come for the MIB. And for the others who are not graduates from Cotton University, we also have uh, some uh, special discount for you. You are not going to pay for the application fee. Uh, I approached a university recently. I was told the application fee is 2,850 ringgit in Kuala Lumpur. And that will give you free. You don't need to pay for that. You apply online. I think that is a win-win situation. Uh, I want to thank all our panel members. I want to thank all the audience. I've seen people joining us from Brunei, from Bangladesh, from Tanzania, all the way from uh, Africa, and people from other parts of the world. We are very uh, grateful for joining us, even though it was on a short notice. But if you have further questions, as I mentioned, just go through through the, uh, the website of Cotton University of Malaysia, and then um, you will see uh, our officer, they are ready to attend to you and to actually help you. 
I also say thank you to Dr. Liu, Dr. to Aina uh, Sheikh, all the way from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, he joined us uh, this afternoon over this morning, and uh, Isaac and our dean also also joined us from all the way from Thailand. So we have people from different parts of the world joining us, and uh, we want to say thank you for the uh, our technical crew led by Atos and uh, uh, His Excellency uh, Nicholas and. Uh, uh, Tay, Melissa Tay, and other people I cannot mention want to say thank you. We look forward to see all of you in February when we start the new semester. And uh, for those of our audience, please take the application and take uh, apply for this program, and then uh, you'll be better off at the end of the day. Uh, I want to hand over now to our technical crew. They will come up with uh, just two minutes video before you go. Thank you so much.